hey what's up guys today in this video we are going to look at one more refactor or not actually refactor but rather i added a new feature so that i can show you when it is an ideal time to do unit test so what i have done is basically added a code which ensures that the url which is coming as a submission url for the video is actually a youtube link now a youtube link can be of two types which is you know youtube.com or the short form which is youtube.be right so i have this regular expression in here which returns one if it finds a match and it returns a zero if it doesn't find a match or it finds an error so this is the function i could have written it in a validator to do the actual validation but i wanted to show you an ideal scenario where you know, we will write unit tests and hence i thought this is you know, something which can be shown as an example although yes you can write that particular logic inside a validation rule okay so this is my function which takes a string it validates and then returns either zero or one now what i have done is created this validation rule so if you see inside the projects i have the rules folder and this i have youtube url rule right so what this rule does is very simple it creates an instance of the video service i had to do like this because i can't create a new instance uh, of video service in its controller because then when i am newing up this class i'll have to pass the video service instance into the constructor okay so instead whenever you are trying to create an instance of a class it's a good thing to do app make and then the class name then laravel will give you back the instance okay so what does the validator do it basically creates the instance and it calls the url okay now i think i have made a mistake over here because it doesn't return a true or false rather this i feel is the better way of doing thing which is i will check for one and if it is correct then it returns true let me quickly run the tests and see yes so there's no problem okay so what we have done so i i told you that this is the service which has this function then i created a validation rule that rule calls this service function passes the value which is going as a url to that particular service and it validates now we use that validation rule inside our validate function in the store method of our controller and obviously this will work as expected but then if you remember there is going to be one major problem once i add this rule which is my create video test if you see always had url equals this faker url and none of the urls were actually youtube urls so all my tests would start to fail no i can't actually do that but you get the point right if if the faker is not returning a url which is going to return true on this regular expression then it's a problem right so i think i can also simplify the code where it actually returns a boolean i'm not very sure if it was the other boolean but i can do something like this right so this is simplified the service is sending a true or false and based on this right what i can do is reduce this code to just this okay and i think my refactor is correct because everything should pass it does let me try to fail it and see what happens so if i do that ideally things should start failing yes it does which is why i think it is fine okay so yes i have simplified this and let me see if my php 8 type hinting works yes it does no complaints here so yes this is done okay service i have the url url is simplified Uh, sorry the rule is simplified controller is using that now 
how do we validate this right we saw that you know we had to make some changes in our integration tests i i added this private property as url and inside the setup property uh, rather the setup method of our test i initiated that url with this fixed hard coded uh, youtube link okay now if you don't know what that setup function is then understand that every class has a constructor method right so whenever we are creating the instance of a class the constructor is getting called and an instance is formed and when whatever is there in the constructor will be executed now in test cases you have the setup method the setup method is called after every test which is being executed inside a test case class okay the constructor is called when the class is instantiated whereas the setup is called before every function inside this test case is getting executed that's the basic difference okay you need to understand that so what i have done is i've created this url and then each and every instance where i was referencing url i had to change that to this url so you can see those changes Th that's the only change i have done in this test case otherwise everything remains as is no business logic has changed whatsoever but i have written some test which is for the actual function which is inside the service so what i have done again i have created an instance of the service and then i have this array of urls which i am looping through and i'm asserting that it returns one okay i can also do true both will work and that is the reason my tests were passing okay it is taking it as a you know true boolean value but you get the point right i can even simplify this to assert true and i just get rid of that like so and this one is changed as well let me run it quickly and see okay there's a problem it says failed asserting that true is false one of them is passing is it this function let me see no it's still doing that so assert false it should what is it returning let me die dump it is returning true which is very interesting it has y o u t u okay so why is my url still if i remove this okay this is false so i think that because the regular expression has y o u t u it was passing and that was the problem okay so the url which i had given was actually not the best test case to fail this logic but yeah um what else i can do i can add a vimeo link actually vimeo.com slash v equals three i can even have the https and this should work let me see it does so yes so as you can see i i was able to fix my problem using the test cases and without even you know getting the need to make an api call or do something because yeah i mean i was able to execute my code and i was able to execute it with a lot of different data so i have few correct urls i have few wrong urls i will try to see if i can find more you know, specimens and i will add that to the code base but yes you generally get the point right that we are able to execute our code this is unit test and this is called unit test because you now i am focusing only on a very specific function right and if you see unlike the video test a unit test doesn't by default have refresh database and stuff like that there is a basic difference between a unit test and a, a normal test which is also called unit integration and that's that this test case is extending php unit framework test case whereas this is extending the tests test case which is part of what we get 
I'll just you know, go into this. Uh, okay, I can't open inside the you know, diff. So I'll have to go over here. So you can see this is coming from the base test case, which is part of the Illuminate Foundation testing test case. And that's the reason we get functions like this acting as or this JSON, you know, which is part of the Illuminate um, you know, package, part of Laravel. Whereas when I am writing a test case, uh, which is a unit test, I won't get those features. I can extend this test case with the Illuminate Foundation thing, but yeah, I'm. what is the reason if I am not using anything which is part of the Illuminate? That is the whole idea, right? The unit test doesn't require all those things. So if you plan it that way, it will be very helpful. So that's about it. That's how we can do unit tests. And one more important thing is I haven't checked for YouTube URL validation in the integration test. Why? There are two things. The way I've I architected the code, I have a validation rule. Now the validation rule can either return true or false, which is part of the framework. I don't need to test whether a validation is working properly or not. I want to test whether the business logic inside the validation works properly or not. And that I can do using the unit test. So this is one more perfect example where you need to say that, you know, I am not going to test the framework. I am going to only test the business logic which I have. So yeah, that's about it. If you like the video, do click on the thumbs up icon. And yes, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.